Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you have ever listened to classical music? Or maybe been to an opera? Maybe not many of you. But if you listen to one of these pieces, they always build up with soft sounds, soft acts, and little pieces here and there into a gradual and powerful crescendo. There is a very dramatic moment in a song or something that you watch, and then everything is revealed, all of the secrets of the, of, of the situation. Well, in chess, sometimes we have games similar to what I am describing. And you are very lucky you clicked on today's video because today we are witnessing a viewer game submitted to me between two 700 rated players, which was awesome and culminated with seven queens in the final act. Are you ready? Here we go. I hope you have a great time. It's actually, uh, joking aside, it's actually a pretty good game as well, so stuff to learn here. Uh, this game was submitted to me by Tenedor, which is uh, Spanish for the word fork. Uh, and uh, Black is named uh, Dominguez, not Lanier Dominguez. And obviously they get honorary Grandmaster titles for being in a Gotham video. So we have a London into a Queen F6. Show of hands. Don't show your I, I, I don't know if you're raising your hand. How many of you have seen this? Definitely some of you play the London and you get an opponent that just plays the Queen out early. This is really bad against the London because the London is so solid. There's no way to beat it with stupid queen play. Like black is like unable to play the scholar's mate. So black goes for the next best thing, which is this. Do not help your opponent in the early stage of the game to develop their pieces. Okay, don't give checks really early on, especially if they can kick you out with pawns. Not only does this help the London player set up their pyramid of pawns, but it just doesn't make any sense for black because now black has to make another move with the bishop, right? And already the evaluation, as you can see, is plus two. Because white can, I mean, white could do the typical London thing here, but even if white does this and then just plays normally, I mean, this structure is already significantly better for white. The queen's just not supposed to be here, okay? But okay, white plays knight f3 and hangs a pawn immediately. Now black is better. Like, that's typical 700 stuff. You put the bishop out on the second move because you saw it in a Gotham video, and three moves later, you lose the bishop and a pawn. Okay, that's not good. You have absolutely no excuse to not see this. This is as close as bishops can possibly be uh, without literally being one square apart, okay? So, yeah, this is inexcusable. You have to be able to count attackers and defenders, right? You cannot be losing pawns and justifying your opponent's garbage play early in the game. Now black is just a pawn up. Okay, so what do you do when uh, an individual has captured your pawn very early? Well, you can either completely malfunction and go crazy, uh, or you can just continue to develop because at this level, a pawn is completely meaningless. I just want you to understand. At 700 level, a pawn is not a pawn. It's like a rock, okay? It's just, it's just, it's just there. Like, it's just, <laughs> sorry. Even a knight or a bishop, three points of material at 700 level really does not mean a whole lot. So, white plays knight bd2 and basically just behaves as if nothing happened, like they just lost the pawn. Now, black actually, to their credit, does play a couple of logical moves here, like, you know, knight c6, uh, that's just one move. And then for some reason goes back. Like, I don't understand what the problem with developing this knight was. Like, black was cerebral for a moment in developing the knight, but then decided to move the queen again and move the knight there. Okay, all right, fine. So white is a pawn down, so what do you do in a situation like this? What's next? What's the next step? I love this move. Centralizing the knight, attacking the queen. The queen goes back to safety. And here, white plays an awesome move. White just slowly improves the position. Like, you could argue the bishop should have gone there originally, but when you're 799 and just making slow improving moves, like I said, classical music, opera, right? That's good. And then maybe you're going to put your rook in the middle. And then you're going to connect your rooks. And then maybe then you're going to start playing with your pawns and moving forward. Now, if I ask you here to make a move with black in one second, just one second, what's the move? A lot of you would say castle. And a lot of you have my blessing. A lot of you are absolutely right. Some of you would say d5. Don't hate that move either. Pawn in the center, attack the knight, don't hate it. Stockfish tries to argue, but okay. That's what black should do. Without even thinking, black should castle or maybe attack the knight. There is nothing else. Why? Black is still not castled. Black has barely moved any pawns. Okay, you gotta make pawn progress to do anything. But not this. Why is that move so bad? I know you see the engine go to white's favor, but why is that move so bad? From a principled standpoint, explain to your four-year-old relative why the move e5 is bad. All right? 
Uh, your king is still in the middle. Not to mention that, your second monarch, is that the right way to describe it? They're both in the center. Th that's not, you shouldn't open the center. If they're right there, they need, bot they need defense in front of them. They need a line of defense in front of them. What is this? It's a fair trade, sure. And beginners usually do things like that. They're like, oh, that's a good, that's a fair trade. No. The stronger you get at chess, there's more things beyond, oh, it's just 4-4 four, four of trade. No. Your king's in the center. And white here could take and does take. White could also shove the pawn forward and just begin bullying black, shoving all their pieces backward and so on. Um, but white takes. And then takes. And then here. And oh my, I love this move by white. Look at this. Queen, king, rookie one. Only bad things are about to happen. Now, the real threat in this position is moving the knight and the queen being pinned to the king. The amazing thing is, after black castles, there are no threats. Yes, the queen is under attack, but that doesn't mean the queen is going to be won. If knight check, queen takes. If the knight moves to any of these squares, the queen will take the knight. In chess, it's important not to see ghosts, okay? Because rookie one threatens the queen, but if black were to castle, black would have been completely fine. Instead of that, black's queen ran to the opposite side. This is like true opera. Queen runs away to another land, leaving the king stranded. Ooh, right now the knight moves. And anywhere the knight moves, it's check. And the king is not going to get the safety. Double check. But... The king goes here and, shockingly, is safe. We have another plot twist in our soap opera. Like, what is white going to do now? White does not have knight f7. Knight f7 looks like mate, but it's not. Okay. Well, then the knight has to come back to c4. And almost all of the advantage is gone. Now, the engine here wants white to play knight f6. And the difference here is that you play queen e2 and threaten queen e7. That's the threat. You threaten queen to e7. Very tough to stop, because if queen c5, queen e8 is the other reveal. There are two checkmate threats. Really brutal. And when you go this way, you don't have this, because takes and I get out. So that's the difference. Very tough to see. All right. Now, I love white's next move. White's next move is the top engine move. 799 playing the top engine move Queen d2. Why is this move so good? Couple of reasons. Number one, you want to go there. Right? That's like, but the queen is covering, but that's an idea. You want to block maybe rook queen g5, hit all sorts of stuff. You also want to connect your rooks or double them, right? You just want to get that rook out. I love the move queen d2. Now, black here needs to start bringing more pieces to help because this position is extremely dangerous for black. Not good. Very dangerous position. I'm talking trade some rooks. Get the king over there to safety. Maybe d6. Get the bishop out. All right? Black plays the move d5. Again, a very loose move in the center of the board. Very loose move. A lot of open space here now. And white apparently is plus nine here if white plays b4. Danger levels. Okay? Uh, the idea, of course, being that let's say the queen moves. Now you have check. And uh, too much stuff is going to be lost in this process. Like if queen f6, you have queen takes d5. And uh, yeah, I mean, you're going to go here, here. It's, it's the knight e5. It's just game over. So uh, you actually apparently cannot even start with this move because there is one defensive move here for black, which is queen f8. But if it wasn't for queen f8, this position is plus 10. So that is why the computer wants you to play b4. But it doesn't matter. d5 is too loose. However... White sees that the knight is hanging and goes knight e5 and ruins a little bit of the advantage because there's no threat. And if black plays f6, there is no queen g5. There's no threat. Now the knight has to go back and slowly but surely black will consolidate. However, black completely does not understand that their position is in dire straits. They just do not get it at all and plays knight g4. Completely not understand. Like, what is black trying to do here? Was black like, well, you're going to take me, I'm going to take, ha. First of all, there's queen g5, so that, that doesn't even work. This knight was serving such an important defensive role for, like, all of this game, just covering f7. It stopped mate. 
you know? But instead of that, instead of just developing a piece and like trying to defend or defending the king like this, Black is like, I'm gonna go forward with my horse. It's pitch dark in the forest. Why are you going forward with your horse? You're gonna fall, okay? Don't do that, okay? Knight g4, and now white can just go here, right? This is just, that's just, this is game over in a few moves. Queen g5 is game over in a few moves. So, white takes on f7, king to d7, and here, white can just take the rook. That's the simplest thing. There is no threat. This is protected. Instead of that, white is like, oh, I can take that later. I'm gonna give another check. All right, I respect it, but now, now what? So the simplest thing to do here is to take the knight, and then here, and then come back and take the bishop. That's the simplest thing to do. And, and try to get this king over here and then checkmate it in a few moves. Why am I saying that's the simplest? You say, well, Levy, what about this? That's actually not a great move because then you lose your bishop. And if you take the bishop, uh, then I'm going to take it with the rook that's hanging. So this really weird thing you did where you created too many threats at the same time, and now you have to choose one, which is why it's better to just take the rook for free. But okay. Instead of that, white plays another threat. Doesn't take the rook, doesn't take the bishop, plays the move b4. Okay, that's actually an interesting move. Black here plays what I call an accidentally genius move, okay? Black justifies the queen and knight and plays queen takes f2 check. That is, I think, just an outright mistake. I think black just forgot that that was defended because that seemed to have been black's idea a long time ago but in this case, it's actually the top engine move. Why? Everything else is terrible. Why this? Because now white has to choose, right? White is stuck with a choice. One of those things is going to fall. So white takes the bishop because this is hanging and this is hanging. Black here plays an absurd move. N what? Black doesn't take? He j what? So now the rook is still hanging for completely free. And th if this rook is hanging and this rook is hanging, how does white save the rook and win the rook? It's not a riddle. How does white save the rook and win the rook? Maximum danger. Always look for checks. Check, only legal move, knight takes h8. That's how you would do it, okay? Now, you could also, by the way, go here and just try to checkmate this king. There's like some really obscure checkmate net here where this king could get uh, locked away and potentially checkmate it in a few moves after a4. Uh, yeah, but no. Uh, so check and get away. Instead of that, white just takes the rook and does the math. They take my rook, I take their knight, they take my bishop, I escape with the knight. Okay, terrific, white is just winning. White is up a knight for a pawn. Um, the way you actually win this position is you try to maintain some level of pawns on the board, okay? Because rook and knight versus rook is a draw. You can't win. It's unwinnable. Now, the reason you need pawns on the board is because they can become queens. The name of the video is Seven Queens. You're not ready for this. Uh, and what black should do is try to activate and actually win a couple of pawns. Why? Because pawns are actually very scary in endgames. Like, in a worst-case scenario for white... Like, let's say white wins the wrong pawns. White goes over there and then loses these pawns. White is hardly better anymore after something like c5. I mean, there's rook b1 stuff, but once the pawns get rolling, like, if white wait, like, look at these pawns. c4, d4, like, look at this. Black is already better. So pawns are very scary, especially when they're all together. And this is a cluster of four. That's a terrifying cluster. So white plays knight f7, gives a check, and black starts coming for the pawns, right? Okay, g6 is a weird move. I don't know what that is. And what black wants to do, you should put a rook on the seventh rank. Why? Be careful. But because it defends everything. White will not be able to get in. That is how you protect your pawns and then come, come forward with your pawns. You should not be pushing here. This is not where you're stronger. You're stronger over here. So push over here, okay? So g6, white plays, king g2. Yeah, no, what, why? See, no understanding of endgames. 2-2, two, two, you're not stronger there. You are stronger here. So come forward, okay? Try to get this pawn. I understand you're losing, but you were losing a long time ago. You've been losing for a while. So h5, yeah, that's just not good. You're gonna lose this pawn. What does white do? What? Take the... Now look what, look, look what black allowed. Look what white allowed. Now there's rook f2. Get the rook in and start taking stuff. I'm telling you, folks, you don't realize 
how close you can get to just being in a totally lost position. Like, if Black starts winning these pawns, it's just going to be a crazy pawn race. So, the king should not be doing the battle. Do the battle with the knight and the rook. C6. Okay, not a bad move. There it is. Nice. I love this counterplay by Black. Finally. King G5. Rook A3. Rook E3. Clutch move. But now Black has a move here that gets them back in the game, and that move is D4. And uh, White can be in a lot of trouble here. First of all, you might hang a rook and lose the game. Instead of that, Black plays this, which is okay. But there is a, a tactical trick here. But you see we have this position. Now we have this. And now Black plays this move. The problem with this move is that it's C takes D4 with check. So Black made this mistake and had to respect the pawns a little bit more and not blunder a check. Black played the slightly wrong approach and decided to walk into a check. Now we have a rook trade. And ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the crescendo of today's video. You have waited long time for this. Normally you have to wait an hour. In classical music, some of the pieces are extremely long. Are you ready? Here we go. White takes the final pawn. Black advances the B pawn. White advances. Black advances. Advance, 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 advance! That's four queens now that the players have had. Now, white has a checkmate sequence here with queen a5, knight c4, and so on. Probably some way to win the queen. Queen a5 check, though. And here, rather than trying to corral the king like this and force some sort of mate or win a queen by force or checkmate in one move, white says, nope, queen b5, anything you can do, I can do better. Four queens have perished from the board. G4, A5, G5, A4, G6, A3, G7, A2, G8, A1. Here, we have check. King A2. And the queens perish once again. But here's the problem. Tenador had one pawn remaining. And that pawn will become our seventh queen. Knight g6 is a really funny move. By the way, that is completely not necessary. But the knight moves. The pawn runs. King runs. Pawn runs. King runs. Pawn runs. King runs. But you're one square short. You take the knight. And now witness this legendary endgame technique from the 799. Check. Here. Boxing in the king. Not letting the king escape. Chasing the king all over the board. And black's king foolishly walks to the edge and gets absolutely locked in. King goes back, king comes around, and it takes 70 moves and seven queens. But Gotham subscriber gets the job done in very convincing fashion.